All right, sample 10-8 deals with the rotational kinetic energy of a flying disk. Um, we're told the mass has, or is, excuse me, 175 grams, that it has a diameter of 0.266 meters. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to write down the radius because I know that diameter doesn't appear anywhere in my formulas. The player takes a disc at rest and does one joule of work on it, causing the disc to fly off in the horizontal direction. Uh, so what does that mean? The, this is, believe it or not, is a work energy theorem question. But before you run screaming, just realize that the Frisbee player has done work on the Frisbee and given it energy. So it's not too bad yet, all right? So all that means is that it's going to give it a certain amount of energy. Now, what kind of energy is this Frisbee going to have once he does this one joule of work on it? Well, it's going to have some kinetic energy. And does it have any potential energy? We'll see, okay? Um, it says it's flown off in a horizontal direction. So if we choose this height, whatever it is, as h equals zero or, or h equals anything, the point that we need to make here is that the height of it doesn't change. So it's gravitational potential energy doesn't change. So we're not interested in it. So this can go away. There's no spring anywhere in sight. So we can neglect that. Okay. But you knew there was a but. There's two types of kinetic energy that we need to deal with. We need to deal with the translational kinetic energy. That's point A to point B plus the rotational kinetic energy. So it has some because it's moving at a speed of, well, what turns out to be a little over three meters per second. But it also has some energy because it's spinning, okay? So those are the two kinetic energies that we need to figure out. Now, they don't have to tell us this, but they make our lives a whole lot easier by telling us that the translational kinetic energy is 90% of the total. So that's 0 0.90 joules, and that the rotational kinetic energy is 10%, so we know that that's 0 0.10 joules. This is going to make our lives easier. It's not necessary, as you'll see in the next sample, but it's going to make our lives easier. So part A, we're going to find the velocity, the velocity of the center of mass. That means we got to use translational kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half mv squared. Well, over here, we've got our translation translational kinetic energy is 0 0.90 joules is one half mv squared. We know the mass is 175 grams and a little bit of algebra tells us that the center of mass and therefore, well, the center of mass of the disk is moving at 3.2 meters per second. So back in unit one where we didn't care about spinning, we would have said, oh, the speed is 3.2 meters per second. However, it's also spinning. So some of that joule of energy that the Frisbee player did on it, some of that went into spinning. And we need to find, in part B, how fast is it spinning, okay? How fast is it going? How fast is it spinning? Both of these matter, okay? So we know that rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. And I'm going to take that to the next page. Rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. Now we need to figure out moment of inertia for a disc. So you flip back to page 462 and you find a solid cylinder, right? Because a disc is just a really flat cylinder. It's a cylinder that doesn't have very much length, okay? There is, but it, the length is not zero. It's not a one, it's not a two-dimensional object. It's still a three-dimensional object. So the in, inertia, excuse me, rotational inertia from a disc is one half mr squared, okay? So quick calculation here. The mass of the disc is 0.175. The radius of the disc is 0.133. Gives us, let's just put the number down here, a moment of inertia of 1.55 times 10 to the minus third kilogram meter squared. It's pretty low. It's pretty easy to start a disc from start a disc spinning. Okay, so let's come back here to rotational kinetic energy is half I omega, and we have 0 0.10 joules is equal to one half times 1.55 times 10 to the minus three 
kilogram meter squared, and then omega squared. And again, a little bit of algebra gives us an omega of 11.4 radians per second. So that tells us everything we need to know about the disk, how fast the center of mass is moving, and how fast it's rotating. So if we were to add up our 1 half i omega squared and our 1 half mv squared, we'd get this one joule, right? So if you think about that, it's the object is actually moving slower because it's rotating, because some of that energy had to go into rotating the disk. And there's only one joule of energy available. That's all the work the player did on it. So its speed is actually a little bit slower because of the rotation. So we'll talk more about this, but that's our first, that's our first shot at uh, translational and rotational kinetic energy.